So what we'll do is we'll start off with just a brief review of mobile health, just so we're on the same page. So um, in mobile health, there's two types of interventions, or this is in any digital health setting. Uh, there's two types of interventions. One type is a push, that is where the device or the wearable reaches out, interrupts the person in their life, and attempts to provide some sort of ideas, suggestions, motivation, and so on. And then there's pulls. Uh, most mobile apps have tons of pulls. This is when the individual recognizes they need help and they go to the app to, to access that help. Uh, we're gonna focus today on pushes and the reason why is this is the kind of intervention that is an intervention in which you interrupt someone in their daily life in which you can both do good, but you can also produce uh, negative impacts. And so it makes it very important to experiment to understand when to push interventions and in what settings. Uh, that was my one slide about mobile health. Now we're gonna go on to micro-randomized trials. This is a type of trial, it's an optimization trial. So it's, there's no real control arm here. It's not a two-arm trial or three-arm trial. It's, a, uh, it's for optimization, that is for building a mobile intervention. So what happens in a, a micro-randomized trial? Here, each user is randomized many times. Uh, it depends on the particular application, but uh, say on a 42-day uh, trial, each individual might be, each user might be randomized five times a day or one time a day, it just depends. So it's, that's what, why we use the word micro-randomization. And this uh, randomization uh, can be quite vanilla. You can just randomize over a fixed probability, and we have done that. Uh, but the randomization also, more generally, and I think as we go to the future, this is going to be the case, it's going to depend on some algorithms. And this is mainly because there's usually a probabilistic budget. That is, uh, the scientific team is so concerned about burden uh, on the individual that they'll specify ahead of time, for example, on average, uh, the individual should only get uh, two messages per day on average. So that's a probabilistic bu budget on the number of treatment pushes. Um, and so as a result, the randomization actually ends up using different algorithms such as online predictions and what we'll see, we'll call reinforcement learning. A critical aspect of these trials, these micro-randomized trials, is that you need to be able to use the data at the end of the study to perform or to uh, make a variety of anal uh, analyses, in particular causal inferences. And so that's going to always um, in the, be in the back of our mind as we go to uh, develop these algorithms that are going to do the randomization. So what does the data look like? Well, on each user, you can imagine a sequence, like almost like a time series of uh, uh, what we'll call context or state, then action is capital A, and then uh, reward is capital R. And I've written uh, some uh, language describing this. So the context state, this is uh, any observations that are accruing with time, the person's current location, uh, their most recent self-reported mood, and so on. The action is our messages, that is these treatment pushes, and the reward is some sort of response, some near-time response we're interested in considering. Uh, and the reason why it's near-time is because for the most part, uh, most of the pushes are intended to help individuals in the setting they're in at that moment. Now, of course, they aim to uh, encourage longer-term uh, uh, accrual of good habits but the biggest impact will probably be in the near time. So that's why the reward is a near time reward. Uh, throughout, I'll use this notation, this little R you see here at the very bottom of the slide. It's the conditional mean of the reward given current state action, state or context uh, and action. 
And so you see that this will be uh, a model, we'll end up modeling this as we go through.